Hey guys, in today's video, we're working on a GMC Sonoma 1994 to 2004. We're specifically working on the back wheel drive truck, not the four wheel drive truck with the six cylinder engine. And we're doing the front brakes. We're gonna change everything on the front brakes, calipers, rotors, bearings, brake pads, and we're gonna do everything in extreme detail with no shaky camera, no bad lighting. You're gonna completely understand how to do this at the end of this video. Let's get into it right away. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is jack up your truck nice and safe. I got it jacked up by the frame, as you can see. I got a tire with some board for extra just in case. And I got a tire there just in case, jack stands. Lift it at your own risk, that part is up to you. Turn the wheels all the way to the right. The first thing you're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna try to pull this caliper off. So you'll see that back here, there is these, uh, see these bolts? One there, one there right on the caliper, see? So you just wanna grab a little tiny little screwdriver, like this one, and you just wanna get in here, and you wanna kinda clean some of the crap out so that is step number one I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera see you in about uh, 30 seconds guys okay got those cleaned out so remember dust from brakes is very harmful to you so wear a respirator uh, don't blow on it with anything so you don't breathe the dust if you're hammering stuff try to wear a respirator whenever you can okay so I got this little set here it was like 30 bucks you can get these on eBay See what we need is one of these. This is what it looks like. And this is called a uh, T55, guys. And what you wanna do is you wanna put this in here like so. And you wanna get a hammer and you wanna hammer it in all the way. So it goes all the way in because if it's rusty, it's gonna be tough to get it in there. Okay, see, just like this, grab a hammer. Okay, so there it is, in all the way. It's gotta be in all the way. It's gotta be straight. If it's not, it's gonna break. So then you grab a ratchet and you push on it. And if you're pushing on it and it feels like it's gonna break and it doesn't wanna go, then what you gotta do, guys, is, okay, so not right here, but right here. See this part? That's where it threads in, is right where my finger is. We got to get a blowtorch and we got to heat this up. Let me show you. Okay, so this is a plumber's blowtorch for like soldering copper pipes. $15, you can get one of these anywhere. So you light it up, so simple. And what you do is, remember never use these on shock absorbers or they will explode because it's compressed gas. You just go like this. just hold it there hold it there for one minute just like that and then after a minute maybe go in here see and go like that you want to get that spot see that heat expands metal and once it expands this will come right out and you're not going to break any bolts so i'll see you guys in one minute i'm going to go ahead and heat that up Okay, so I did a minute like that. Now I'm gonna get in on this side. The camera's really like picking up the heat here, but um, you know, it's just a, it's not the hottest flame in the world. It's not gonna get a red hot. Okay, so I did like total of like three minutes heating it. Let's see if this works now. Look at that, absolutely no problem. And I'm telling you guys, that bolt would have broke. So I'm gonna pull this one out and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the bottom bolt, right? I'm just gonna heat it up right there and loosen that. So that'll be step number one or number two, whatever we're on. Uh, okay, I'll get to that when I loosen the bottom one. So I hammered in the bottom one and I'm heating it up. 
obviously wear eye protection, you know, dust mask when you're, if anything's dusty. Okay, so I heated up the bottom one as well. Let's see if uh, it comes off. Ugh, look at that. Smooth like butter. Once you heat it up, they feel really, really good. Like nothing ever happened. Okay, so you're gonna unscrew this one and the top one all the way. They do come right out. If you're having a hard time, you can get a screwdriver and a hammer and tap it uh, this way once you screw it out. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. I'm gonna get both of these completely out. Super straightforward. Okay, one. So now to get that off, you just put it down like this. You give it a couple good wax right here and it'll come out. Might even want to put it like on top of something metal. Like an axe. There it goes. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, and the other one came right out. So this is ready to come off. Okay, so if you were reusing your caliper, right? So you can go in here, right in between the piston and the pad, right? You put in a screwdriver and you can kind of pry it open. Ours are pretty seized up and I'm replacing everything, but you can use a C-clamp later too. But So you go like this and you just put a screwdriver in here and watch this whole thing. See, we'll just come right out, guys. Do the same thing at the bottom. So there it is. There is our caliper off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, you want to hang it over here like this. You don't want it hanging on the uh, brake line, see? So you got to get a string, tie it up, and hang it. I'm going to set that up. I'll show you guys in a few minutes what that looks like. Okay, so just temporarily I put it up top here, see? So, I mean, this one pad comes out super easy. You could tap it with a hammer even. Right? So that's your outer pad. Look how worn out it was. And there's your inner one. Just like that. So... Anytime you're taking anything off, put your inner one there so you know how it goes back when you put the new one on. Outer one there. That's what I always do. I always put things the same way I take them off. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tie this up for now. Okay, see I just got it hung up like this. There's no strain on the brake hose. So now, we are going to take this dust cap off. It's very simple. You just grab a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver like this. You very lightly tap it with a hammer and this just comes off. Because next we're pulling the rotor off, which is one unit with the bearings and everything. Like the whole hub has to come off. It's part of the rotor and it needs to be replaced because as you can see, our rotors are completely shot. Okay, so let's take this off. Okay. Just lightly and then you just twist. Turn it. Okay, so next in here, there's a cotter pin. So give this a wipe so you can see what's going on. See, there's a cotter pin. So you got to take this, you grab some needle nose pliers, you got to straighten it out so you can push, so you can pull it out. Never reuse these. You have to replace it uh, once we're putting stuff back together. See, it just comes right out. This prevents this nut from spinning off when you're driving. Okay, next we're gonna pull this nut off. Okay, and for that, you're gonna need a inch and 1 16th socket. I believe a 27 millimeter would also work, but this fits perfect. And these usually aren't even on tight, so yeah, see? And that just comes right off. I mean, you could use a, a ratchet if you had to. So you take this off first. And remember the order of things, obviously, in this video, I am going to show you. Okay, next is this. There's like this washer here, but see how there's like an indentation here? See that? 
it has like a like a like a groove in it see this so this doesn't spin so you got to take this off next remember how it came off so you can put it on the same way okay see what i mean let me just give this a wipe see there's like this little thing in it so when you're putting it back on that see that goes onto that groove you can't mess it up but that prevents it from spinning right okay so that comes off and you don't want to like put it on this way you want everything to go on the same way so we're going to take this off and we're going to put it in here see like this and like this so we know how everything goes okay guys next this outer bearing needs to come out guys which is pretty simple okay let me uh, clean up my hands and readjust the camera here okay so you want to grab the whole rotor and you can't reuse any of this stuff. It all has to get replaced. I'll get to that further on in the video, but you pull it off a bit, see? And you push it back and that allows you to grab it. So you got your outer bearing. Same thing, you wanna put it in your little spot the same way it came off. So you know how everything goes back together after, right? Just like that. Okay, now there's another bearing on the other side of this, which just comes off with it. So you just pull this whole thing off. Boom. Just like that. And as you can see, well, let me adjust the camera. So there's the bearing, which you can't get out because there is a seal here. See? So you would pop the seal out. Like if, we're, if you were reusing your rotors or whatever. But So you could pop the seal out and then the bearing would come out. Like I said, in our case, it doesn't matter because we're replacing the seal, the rotor, the bearings. Everything's getting replaced. So this is basically garbage now. So there you have it, guys. Use some brake cleaner, you know, clean all this up. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pressure wash all of this really good. And then tomorrow when it's dry, I'm actually going to repaint the frame. I live in Canada. It's uh, vehicles rust here very very quick like this is all solid but it's pretty rusty so like i said clean all this up make it all nice and then you're ready for uh reinstallation guys i'm gonna paint all this clean it up off camera and i'm gonna fast forward the video till the moment that's all done i'm gonna fast forward till tomorrow right now hey guys it is the next day um so i noticed a situation here let me show you okay so this is the uh, abs sensor this plastic thing and see the backing plate this this part here it's pretty rusted and it like swelled up in here from being rusted and it actually see it kind of pushed this whole thing out see how it's not straight see like this is pushed out see because of all the rusting behind it and what that did is see uh, the rotor would rub right here and it actually rubbed see a hole in it and it broke it so I have to replace the uh, ABS sensor and the backing plate honestly not a big deal so you got a bolt there 13 mil you got a 13 mil there and you just put a wrench on the back just like this and you can take those two off no problem these ones can be a pain if you got rust so what you got to do is you grab yourself an 11 mil like this and you hammer this really really hard over and over the hammering action will uh, loosen it up guys same with this one If you're having a hard time, you could hammer a 10 mil onto these. It's possible, like an impact socket. And by the time all the hammering action happens, these will come out. You can also use your torch to uh, heat them up. These are gonna be prone to, to, to uh, breaking. But after all the hammering I just did there, I did more in between takes. I'm gonna attempt to just unscrew these. If it's hard, then I will heat them up. There we go, nothing to it. If it feels like it's gonna go a little hard, spray some WD-40. 
and then you screw it back in. And then you screw it out again. And each time it's gonna go further and further without breaking. And there it goes. So we got that out. Just like that. So I'm gonna get this one out. Uh, these two out. And there was one here holding the wire. So um, I just used one of these on the inside and a 13 mil on the outside. Okay, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, I got this one out, this one out, these two loose. There goes the, uh, the sensor and the backing plate. There you go, guys. Nothing to it. I will run up and see where this goes, and then I'll tell you where you can get this. But I'll tell you right now. So Napa and PartSource both sell this and the backing plate as a set for under $100, guys. Okay, so the cord goes up here. So I pulled this out like this and I found it. You can get in here with both your hands. I'll show you where it is. And you can unplug it. Let me see if I can record that. See, there it is. So you gotta unplug it there. Um, pretty straightforward. And then that will come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I unplugged it, I pulled it out. See, so this is the top, that's the bottom, and it was just kind of sitting in this thing, so I just kind of pushed, pushed it out, got it out, and there it is. And I, as you can see, this is all rot. So it's time to change it. It's pretty rotted. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till the new one comes in, and we're gonna reinstall it and move on. Okay, guys, here we are. Just two days later, got one of these from Napa. It was like $60. Okay, let's uh, put it on. Okay, so in the meantime, as you can see, I painted up the frame, made it look nice and clean, cleaned it all up. I painted it up to there, I'll do the rest later. So now, see this right here, how there's rust on there? So you just wanna get a wire wheel like this, and you just wanna clean all that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean that right now. See you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so I cleaned it a bit, but if there's still quite a bit on there, like in our situation, grab a knife, scrape it all off, just like that. And then go over it with the wire wheel again. You don't want any rust on there. Okay, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so that is what that should look like and it looks good. So I'm gonna take some bearing grease now, put a little bit on my finger, and just to prevent it from rusting, see, I'm gonna put some around here just like this. Okay, the second thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna grab some anti-seize, great product, and I'm gonna grab some of it, and these bolt holes, I'm gonna put anti-seize in them so they don't seize up in the future. And I do live in Canada and everything rusts here from uh, salt. So I'm actually doing these as well, where the pins go for the actual caliper. Uh, they say not to grease brake bolts, but in Canada we do because uh, they rust shut if you don't. Okay, okay, so that's ready. We're gonna slide this thing on now. And I also noticed that this came with a pin like that. So we'll be able to pull the old one out, put the new one in, and this is just gonna slide on pretty straightforward just like that and then we're just gonna bolt it on right gonna run this up there just the way it was uh looks like there's a rivet missing here so i will think of something okay let me put this on i'll see you guys in a few minutes okay so i'm trying to put this on see and i got if i line up that hole i line up that hole but the problem is see this hole it's not lining up. There's like a piece of metal there and I can't get that screw in. So what you gotta do if you have a situation like that is we're just gonna put this down. I got a little carb bite tip here. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. See what I mean? 
So that's what you might have to do. So I'm gonna do that and try to fit it again. Oh yeah, and I just used a zip tie here where the rivet was missing. Zip ties are great. Okay guys, the ABS sensor is installed. I ran the wire, I zip tied it there and there, hooked it up, put it in that hole. This is good to go guys. Next, we're gonna put the rotor on guys. And in order to put the rotor on, you gotta get two new bearings. This is the inner bearing, this is the outer bearing. You need a seal. So we got all that. So now the bearings, they have races, see these? So that's part of the bearing and this is the bearing. You can't use new bearings with old races on like your old rotors. But if you have new rotors and the races are factory installed like these ones, then you can use them. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna install this bearing, right? Into here. And we're just not gonna use this part, right? Same with the, uh, the front bearing or the outer bearing. If you bought rotors without races in them, you have to take your rotor and your races to a machine shop and they press these in for you at a machine shop. Um, that's what you have to do. You have to press that in and the other one in on the other side, right? In our case, the rotor came with these, so we don't have to do that. Um, so we need to pack this. I will show you how to do that, I guess right now. And uh, there's one more thing. These rotors in particular, see if you notice on the inside of it, <clears throat> see there's all this like crap here, as you can see. So I'm actually gonna clean that up, uh, blow it out with compressed air, wipe it with a rag. Because if, if this ever breaks off and goes in your bearing, your bearing is shot. I don't know what this is. It's some kind of residue paint stuff. So check yours. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to use a carbide tip like this. Uh, careful not to hit the races. You will damage them and you'll have to replace them if you do. See, and I'm just going to kind of clean this crap off. Okay, now that I did that, I'm gonna grab some sandpaper and I'm just gonna clean that. I'm gonna be careful not to scratch these. So let me just do that off camera. Okay, so check it out. Look at all that. You definitely don't want that in there. So I'm gonna blow it out, wipe it up with some rags, spray a little bit of WD-40 on the rag, wipe it again until it's perfectly clean, guys. Okay, and then we're moving on. Okay guys, this thing is spotless and ready for us to put the bearings in it. So I'm gonna show you how to pack the bearings right now. Okay, so you're gonna need some bearing grease from a nice sealed container so there's no rocks or any crap in it. Gloves are definitely a bonus for this. You grab some grease like this and then you take your bearing right here, see? And you just, you gotta push it like this until it's until you see it see on the inside there where the rollers are you want it to start coming out there you can do it this way you can turn it around see you can do it this way you just keep packing it see how it's starting to fill up can you see that grab some more Squeeze it, squeeze it in there. Really nothing to it, guys. Just keep doing that till it's all in the bearing, all squeezed in. See, just like that. There you go, guys. That is a packed bearing, just like that. Should be able to do it in a minute. Okay, so now before you put the bearing in there, you grab some more grease. See, and you fill this up with grease as well. See, there's like a groove there. Fill up that groove nice. There you go. Now we are ready to drop this in. Just like that. Grab a little bit more. 
back feed it a little bit see a little bit more there you go that's what that should look like guys okay guys now that you got that in there and you're happy with the amount of grease um i'm gonna put a little bit more like this we gotta put this seal in so this seal see there's like an inside part and there's an outside part see so as far as i can tell that goes on the inside because that would make sense to me and this goes on the outside can you see that okay so we're gonna kind of pack this as well let me show you how that's done okay so same thing the back of it we're just gonna fill it with grease see just like that See, so the whole thing's like this. Okay, she's all greased up. Let's put this in. I'll show you how to install this. Okay, so you grab it and you basically evenly try to slide it in. Um, you'll never get it in with your hands, just so you know. So now what you gotta do is grab a perfectly clean hammer. See, like this. You hold it on one side and you just tap it where it's sticking out the most. And you go around, see? And there you go, guys. Your outer seal is installed. Grab a rag wipe off whatever's sticking out and this rotor is ready to go on i'm gonna give all this a wipe get rid of my gloves see you guys in a second okay so your inner seal is in you just want it nice and flush all the way in all the way around so this rotor is ready to slide on let's put it on oh yeah before we do that we are going to take some more bearing grease here and you just want to like this is all wiped i cleaned it with a rag see and you just want to Put some there, like that, and on here a little bit too. So that seal has something to slide onto. If you get some on the ABS sensor like I just did, just give it a wipe. Okay, just like that, guys. Okay, let's put this on. So you're just trying to get that seal around this, right? In like a spinning motion. There we go. She is on. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, guys, is I am gonna pack the outer bearing. I'm gonna pack this with grease, which you've already seen, so I'm not gonna repeat that. And in here, um, I'm actually gonna pull this out and I'm gonna fill this with grease inside too. Okay, let me show you. See, just like this. There we go. All right, here's our packed bearing. Let's put it in, guys. Oh yeah, and it goes in, obviously you can't put it on backwards. It goes in this way. Okay, once it's in, a little bit more grease. Next, see this nut with this little, whatever you wanna call that? So that goes on, there's like a cut out there for it. So that goes on next, just like that. Boom. Then we got this nut. Make sure everything is super clean, guys. Like wipe everything down. Make sure there's no rocks or stones on it or nothing. Um, and also you'll notice that you gotta have a new cotter pin, right? You'll notice that there's a hole for the cotter pin. So make sure you know where that hole is. So you're gonna tighten this thing. So at first you're gonna tighten it to 12 foot pounds, guys, on your torque wrench. 12 foot pounds, 12 foot pounds, guys. All right, 12 foot pounds. Now they want you to spin this forwards a few times. Okay, now they want you to tighten it to 20 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds, guys.
Okay, we got 20 foot pounds, right? Give it a few spins forwards. Now what they want you to do is they want you to take this thing and they want you to loosen this nut one quarter of a turn. So there it is. So a quarter of a turn loosen like this. That is a quarter. Take this off. Now take this thing and by hand, tighten it by hand. And that should roughly be where you wanna be. So that hopefully does it guys. Hopefully it's not too tight. Okay guys, so as you could see, I was able to get the cotter pin in, no problem, right? But let's say in your case, uh, the hole wasn't lining up, right? So there's actually a second hole, uh, like one goes down and one goes sideways. So then you would try to get it into the second hole instead, right? And if that doesn't work, then what you would do is you would tighten it until one of the holes lines up, get it? They're, the way the holes are designed, they're designed in a way so you have to tighten it minimal to be able to get one of them in first. Okay, let's see how it feels. Feels good. After the wheel is on at the end of this video, I'll show you how to check for play. If this has any play, you have to take this off and tighten it more and then you got it too loose. There's like a perfect amount that it needs to be at. You can't over tighten it. You can't over loosen it. It's basically hand tight. That's basically how you do it after the process I just showed you guys. Okay, so sometimes there is a uh, nut lock and then you put this in. In our case, this car, this truck didn't have it. So uh, I don't think, some of them have it, some of them don't, I think. But you put in your cotter pin, boom, and you bend the ends of it with clean pliers. There, just like that. If the wheel spins this way, when the car's going forwards, then you bend this this way. Okay, once you got this cotter pin inside, you just want to make sure when you put your dust cover on, it's not going to touch it anywhere, right? Kind of move it like this, see? To check. Ours is looking good. Uh, give anything that's sticking out a wipe. And um, let's put this dust cover on. Okay, make sure it's nice and clean. And that is it, guys. We're going to move on to the uh, brake pads and caliper now. So make sure your dust cover sits like that. Everything feels great here. Okay guys, so now, just temporarily, um, we're gonna put the old caliper on. No pads or nothing. You just wanna get it on, um, just like that. Put these two pins in. Good enough right there, that's all you really need to do. Now, you're gonna grab a wired brush, and right underneath here, guys, see? Uh, we need to loosen this bolt that is the brake hose that connects into the caliper. And the caliper has to be on in order to get that off. Get it? So I'm just gonna clean it a little bit. If yours is rusty. Okay, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, grab an 11 mil, a hammer, hammer this on. And now we're gonna try to loosen it. Uh, it should come off. These usually do. Come on. Okay, see, just like that. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tighten it back up just a tiny bit so then I can loosen it when the caliper's not on. That way you don't lose too much fluid, get it? Okay, let's pull this caliper back off. And we're gonna put the new caliper on. Now I'm just gonna put this one off to the side for now. Okay, so here's our new caliper, right? Nothing to it. You got your two pads, one and two. So the one with this metal thing, pretty straightforward. Just goes in here like so. Oh yeah, you gotta pull these pins out, my bad. Let's pull the two pins out. This one goes in first. 
See, it just clips in. See, just like that. This one goes just like this. See, really nothing to it. You can't put them on wrong, honestly, in this particular vehicle anyways. See, just like that. Okay, let's go put this on the car. Okay, just before we put it on, I forgot something. So, so these right here, let me just take these out for a second. Right, so these here, they slide, see, look. See what I mean? So in Canada, the first thing that rusts is these get all rusted and they stop sliding. So what we do here is the pads even come with it. So you can use bearing grease too, or like a brake, brake grease or whatever. So you wanna get it and you wanna like, you wanna just put it all around it. It prevents it from rusting, get it? See, so just like that. Same on the other side. That will prevent these from, from rusting. Like you'll get a few years before you have to, you know, they rust if you don't grease them up right away. Like within a year they can seize up. So you're gonna do that one and you're also gonna do this one. You know, both sides. See, just like that. Okay, you guys get it, right? Okay, we're gonna throw the pads back on and we're gonna put this caliper on, guys. Okay, let's put this caliper on, guys. Just keep your pads open and she'll just slide right in there, guys. See, just like that. Okay, now these pins, there's actually an Allen key now. So this is a different, remember before it was this thing? Now it's an Allen key, whatever. But that was same thing. I'm gonna put the grease on these, on both of them and then put these pins in here because if you don't grease them up they very quickly start to look like that because they just rust the grease prevents them from rusting see just like this okay and then you just slide it in here and the other one Okay guys, so according to this awesome book guys, for educational purposes here, um, the torque specs according to this book, uh, front caliper guide pins, single piston front caliper, which is what we have, 37 foot pounds guys. That's what it says, that's what we're gonna tighten them to. Okay, I got it on, I torqued these uh, to what I said, so now, Got to remove this bolt and you'll notice there's two copper washers. So we're using this. We're not changing the brake hose, the rubber brake hose. So anyways, we're using this. You'll notice there's two copper washers on that. So we're using the new bolt. So now we're going to remove the old bolt and remove this, but don't just put it on right away. There is, there is something you got to do to this first. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that and get rid of this old caliper out of here. Okay, I got the old caliper off. So one of the washers, see it stayed on the caliper, so that's good. You gotta make sure, sometimes they stay on the hose and I've seen it where people end up putting two of them, right? So there it is. Then you take this one off and you'll notice, you see this copper washer is stuck on the bolt. So you gotta make sure that neither one of the copper washers are on this thing. So that's step number one. The second thing you have to do guys is See how there's like a rust buildup on there? So if you just put your new copper washer on here, it's not gonna compress good because there's like a thick, see, buildup of rust. So what you gotta do is we're gonna take a utility knife. Okay, there's my knife, but just so you can see what I mean. See, like these are a little bit bigger than, the, than that one, get it? So if you just go to put these on, it's gonna bind up on the rust. So you gotta take a utility knife, See like this, and you gotta scrape all this rust off. See what I mean? See like that, and then the second thing you gotta do is, see in this groove here? So you can see where the copper washer went up to, and then there's like a piece here where uh, it didn't, so it's all rusty. So same thing, you grab your knife, and you gotta scrape this out. So you're right up to the edge. 
if you're not getting new hoses. That's what you got to do if they're rusty like that. See what I did there? So you got to do that on both sides, guys. Wear gloves. This stuff is corrosive. Brake fluid. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, clean the other side the same way. And then you're going to grab a rag, right? And you're going to clean all the little shavings off, like so. You're going to run the rag through it like this to get any shavings off. You get it? So that's what that needs to look like. Okay, off camera, I'm gonna clean the other side right now. Okay, guys, she's nice and clean and ready to go on. So now, uh, that's the front of the car going that way. See, there's like a cutout here. So that's how this goes on. See, so you take your two washers, keep one on the bolt. See, one goes on there. And then you want this washer on here. And then that goes onto there. I'm going to need an 11 mil. Hang on here, guys. Okay. Boom. Okay, so now according to this book here, front brake hose to caliper, bonjo bolt, 32 foot-pounds, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that to 32 foot-pounds with my torque wrench. Okay, so I got that on as you can see. See, that's how it goes. It's torqued, it's good. Everything's good here now. So now what you gotta do is up here, see there is a bleeder screw. See that? And there's a plastic or rubber boot on there. So you pull this thing off, save it for later when you're done bleeding. So you pull that off and we're gonna loosen this bolt just a little bit. So when you're bleeding your brakes, what you're gonna have to do is, so this is what you do, okay? Put this on, so open it, fluid will come out, right? And then when you go to close it, you basically pull it up and you close it. Like if, if it starts to grip there, watch. Like probably about there. Now it's, it's tight. Like you don't wanna over tighten it and break it, but it's gotta be tight. So now it's closed. Right, and then you'll again open it, fluid will come out, and then you close it. Same thing, see, look. Now it's closed. So what we're gonna do for now, guys, is you're gonna open it. Boom, it's open. Okay, let's pop the hood. Okay, and we're gonna put some DOT3 brake fluid in, guys. So let's do that. Okay, so right here, you can open up this cap. This thing might be like popped out, so then you just pop it back in. It's like an expansion thing. And you're gonna fill this up, you know, to max with uh, brake fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Remember the bleeder is open right now. Okay, she's nice and full. Okay, so now you're gonna take this thing. Don't forget later to tighten it, but you're just gonna put it on, but you're not actually tightening it. You're just leaving it like this. So now over here at the bleeder screw, sometimes, but not always, it'll kind of start to gravity bleed itself and eventually fluid will start coming out. So the caliper will fill up with fluid and it'll start coming out. So if you wait five, 10 minutes, it should start coming out as long as this is opened, which it is right now, see? So I'm gonna give it a few minutes. But either way, I'm gonna be bleeding these brakes in this video. I just have to wait for my buddy to get here. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Uh, but if that starts coming out in a minute or two, I will still show you before he gets here. Okay guys, it's literally been like three or four minutes. And as you can see, it's starting to drip, which means that, see, just like I said, see the fluid is coming out of it. So it's basically it's basically gravity gravity bled already but we're gonna bleed it in this video properly still um yeah let's close this up so i'm gonna go ahead and close it and i'll see you guys in a few minutes when my buddy gets here okay she's closed okay guys ryan has arrived he is gonna help me bleed the brakes okay so with the bleeder screw closed right now uh, we got Ryan in the car here. He's going to start pumping the brakes. He's going to pump it about 10 times. Go ahead, Ryan. 
pumping. See what he's doing, guys? Taking care of business as always. Okay, now hold that all the way to the floor. Holding. Okay, so he's gonna keep holding it no matter what. He's gonna hold it, hold it, hold it, and he's gonna keep holding it. And as soon as I open this screw, this is how you get all the air out of the system. So you open it. He's gonna keep holding the pedal. See, look at that. Some air shot out, and then you close it back up. The whole time he's still holding it, and the pedal usually goes down to the floor and he keeps holding it. So I just closed it back up, and now Ryan is once again gonna start pumping. Perfect. Pumping. So as he's pumping the 10 times, uh, you're just gonna open this. Just take a peek, make sure you got fluid, which we do. Okay, sometimes it can squirt out, so always wear safety goggles, guys. I Here. am now holding. All right, Ryan is holding, guys. Okay, let's open it again. Ready? Keep holding, Ryan. Ooh, I felt it go uh, down good on that one. He says he felt it go down good on that one. So we're going to close it. And you noticed way less um, air came out that time. I think we're only going to have to do it one more time. Okay. Start pumping. Ten times. <laughs> okay. Holding. Holding. Okay, we're going to open it. You guys ready? That is that, guys. So we're going to close it. Ryan, keep holding, keep holding. So now I'm going to give it a little bit of extra tightness. So it's for sure closed good. You don't want to break it. All right, guys. So now that is done. So what you can do now is get a garden hose and just clean up all the stuff that splashed everywhere. And that is it. Thanks, Ryan, for your help. No problem anytime, buddy. Okay guys, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wheels on both sides. I'm going to torque them to right here. Uh, wheel lug nuts, 95 foot-pounds. Um, and then I'll show you how to check your bearings for play. And that'll be that. Okay guys, the wheels are torqued, they are on. So now what you do is you grab the wheel on top, grab it at the bottom, and you're moving it like this trying to see if there's any play in the bearing but yeah there's none if there was some you would uh loosen the like you would pull this off and tighten your bolt maybe one over and put the pin back in always use a new pin each time but a uh, cotter pin right but yeah we're good here for sure looking good okay guys now you know how to change your brakes subscribe if you have one of these trucks guys thanks for watching till next time everybody